16 through 24. It's a lot of verses, but if you read that right now, John 16, verse 16 through 24 in your language. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to review. Sorry that's so loud. It'll be done. Okay. So Jesus has, has just been telling them as we've been reading from chapter 14 on, he starts talking to them about he's, how he's going away. And he keeps repeating himself over and over again. Because they don't believe what he's actually saying. Because they were good Jewish people, the, the disciples. They knew the prophecies that the Messiah, the Savior, would come and set up a kingdom on the earth. So they, they believed those prophecies. But what they didn't understand was that Jesus has two comings in which He will bring the kingdom. The first coming, which is has already happened when Jesus was here, He came to bring the spiritual kingdom and make available to us a way for us to enter into His spiritual family in His kingdom. So he made that possible through his death and resurrection in his it's called the first advent. Sometimes we celebrate advent before uh, Christmas, right? Advent is about the coming of Christ. And then the second advent is when Jesus is coming again, his second coming, and that's what we're looking forward to as Christians. So Jesus starts telling them, "I'm going to go away." And in a little while, I'm coming back. And if you remember last week, I talked about a little while in Jesus' language and His ways. It's not always a little time like we think. Do you remember when we talked about... There is a time. Yeah, so Jesus said in a little while, and it's been 2,000 years since His first coming. Well, to us, that's a long while. That's a long time. But to Jesus, it, the Bible says a day... A day to the Lord is like a thousand years, or a thousand years is like a day. It's like nothing. It's just a breath away. You know, like for, for my sons, like Elijah is 11 and uh, Noah is 14. If I say, you know, it wasn't long ago when you were just born. Now to Noah, I mean, it feels like yesterday when you were born. Well, to him, it's like, that was forever ago. I'm 14 now. His whole life, because that's all he's lived, a short time, you know, a short time to me is, is long to him. Well, think about God to us. So when he says, I'm coming soon. <laughs> it, well, Lord... Uh, it's been 2,000 years and you said you're coming soon. So, okay, so when, when you just read there that passage, he's talking about, I'm going away in a little while I will come. And then they start asking, what is he, what is he really saying? Okay, and then it, we read in there, if you look at verse 21, when a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come, but when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish or her pain for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So Jesus is actually starting to help them understand. He's actually talking, I believe, from this passage, He's actually giving them insight into His the reason why he first came, which was to die and rise again. So he's going away for a little bit at this point. He's going to get captured by the Romans, and then they're going to nail him to the cross the very next day. And then he will die, and they will place him in the tomb. So he's going away to the tomb for a little while. Okay, and so during that time was, was, was a lot of sorrow. And that's what he's saying here. Just like a woman who's having a baby, before the baby comes, all she's thinking about is pain. Now, many of you have given birth. I never have, obviously, because I'm a man. Praise God, I will never experience that. <laughs> all, I, all I know is I was there with my wife. 
<laughs> just watching, <laughs> not experiencing it. Okay, but I, I every time after the babies, you know, are born, of course, the pain is gone, and the baby's there, the new life, and then there's there's joy. So Jesus is using that illustration, and I believe he's he's giving them insight into to both his death and resurrection, which was a short time he was away. He died, he was in the grave, away for three days, and then he rose from the dead, and then they saw him again. Okay, and then he's in this context of chapter 14 through 16, he's also talking about going back to his father and then sending his spirit. So then he will be with us in spirit, but then also one day he will return again in his second advent, his second actual coming. So hes it's almost the thing that he's teaching here, if we look at all three chapters, if because we, we have to remember when we're reading the Bible, sometimes we stop after the end of a chapter. And then we think, well, the next chapter starts something new. Well, sometimes that happens. But here, it's if you just forget the chapters and just read it all together, he keeps telling them, I'm going to go away. I'm coming back again. I'm going away. I'm coming back again. And then he explains something. I'm going away. So in chapter 14, uh, verses 1 through 6, we, we sing it on the guitar that I've been teaching you this song. He says, Do not let your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you and I will come back again and receive you to myself. So he's talking there about his second coming, his second advent. I'm going to go away. I'm going to prepare a home for you in heaven and I'm going to come back. It's called the rapture. It's the where he takes the church, those of us who believe in him. That's He's going away and coming back. And we're looking to that still. We're looking for it. The Bible says we need to always be ready. Jesus said he will come like a thief in the night. And he said and explained, son, what are you doing? Are you trying to get comfortable? <laughs> He's just relaxing. <laughs> it's like Jesus with his disciples at the at the at the table. It says they're all <laughs> just seated and relaxing. So relax, son. <laughs> yep. So um I want to read ahead for for the rest of today. I, that was just kind of my introduction to remind us that Jesus has told them, I'm going away. You're going to be very sad, but your joy will be will come. Okay? Which is his through his resurrection. But I want to read the very last verse of the chapter because I think it's it's kind of the main point Jesus is making, and then we'll go back. And read everything up to the last verse. Okay, so the last verse says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. Okay? In the, the, the Hebrew, this word is shalom. And if you go to Israel or you ever meet Jews, they say this a lot. They say shalom. It's like, or shalom, and then they'll say something like, peace be to you. It's a greeting. Like we say, Jemesir, Jesu, Pihitai, or something like that. It's like a, a greeting, shalom. Okay, now Jesus is the ultimate shalom, the ultimate peace. And he's saying, I'm telling you these things so that you will have peace. And he's meaning peace, not just peace one day when we die, but peace now, in our life now. Okay, verse 33, I have said these things that you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay, so what I want us to do for the next few minutes as we look through is think about the only reason why Jesus can give us his peace is because he is a living God. If he did not rise from the dead. There is no peace, right? If Jesus is still dead in the grave now, 
then <laughs> we're still looking at searching for peace. Right? But if Jesus truly did what he said here that he was going to do, that he would go away and come back, okay, in his death and resurrection, and our future hope is in a future peace is that he went away, his body, he's given us his spirit, and he's coming back again in body as a man. That he was born in the flesh, right? But he was given a new glorified body at his resurrection. But the, the body that Jesus lives in now, he will come back and we will see him face to face. We can touch him just like this, right? <laughs> Noah, Noah has never been, uh, uh, we call it affectionate where you want, you hug, you know? So even when he was little, I would maybe two, three years old. I would pick him up, you know, and just try to hug him, and he'd be like, he'd be like, "Daddy, no!" And then, but he would sit beside me in a chair or something. But Elijah, he's the other way. He climbs up in my lap, you know, and I can hug him, and he'll sit there and and watch TV or whatever with me, you know. It's okay, everybody. <laughs> so see, I can touch Elijah's head. <laughs> but no, I can't touch him. <laughs> he's he's just like dad. Uh, <laughs> oh, warm up! I know. My, I'm losing my voice. No, it's okay. No, no sugar. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Sugar will will it will it will make my throat. <laughs> he just wants a spoonful of sugar. He does. Okay, so keep in mind this verse. Jesus says, I have said these things, which we're going to go back and read these things so that you may have peace. And, you know, the Bible is alive to us today. You may be going, I want, I want some peace. I'm not having very much peace right now. We can look at the scripture and say, Jesus wants to give us peace now. Not just when we die and go be with Him in heaven, which we look forward to that. Perfect peace with Him. But He wants to give us peace now, in our present trials. See, He says, in this world, so now we're in this world, in this world you will have tribulation. That word tribulation means trials, or sufferings. Jesus promised sufferings. You know, if someone... I've talked about this many times. If someone tells you, become a Christian and you'll never have any trials again. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> and some people, they think this, oh, if I become a Christian, I'll get rich. I'll never have any problems. Uh, everything will be good. So then they then they, they say, okay, I'm Christian now. And then, what, one day later, something bad happens? <laughs> Maybe one hour later? Yeah. Something, your employer mistreats you, or you, something, you know? Tribulation, your, your church gets burned down, something. If we, if we say, well, I'm only going to be Christian because I want in this life, no troubles or tribulation. Well, Jesus said, you will have it. But, he says, take heart, I have overcome the world. So we can have peace in the middle of our tribulation. Okay? So let's go back and see, well, what are these things he says that, that he's telling them so that they can have peace? Because we need peace in our lives. It's something that we have to go to Jesus for daily. Because one day you may have peace in your life, and then the next day, some, something else is going to come, uh, some other trial, and then we need Jesus to continue to give us more of Himself and give us more peace. Like we talked about how Jesus is our daily bread. He's the one, just like food, we have to eat every day. He's our daily rice. For those of you who eat rice every day, right? Jesus is our spiritual rice or bread, as he, he says, I am the bread of life. Okay, so let's go back to verse 25. 
Okay? He says, I have said these things to you in figures of speech. Now, he's talking about m many of things that he's taught them over their time of knowing him. Jesus taught it many times in what was called par a parable. A parable is a... Um, a heavenly story with an earthly, I'm sorry, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning it, it is a good way I've heard it put what a parable is. So an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Mm -hmm. And Jesus would tell these stories and then his disciples would say, why do you, why do you say things in parables? And Jesus said, so that those who are blind, so they, they, they don't understand, but you so that you can see. Okay, people that reject God and they don't want anything to do with God, they don't understand. But if we want to know God and we want to see the truth, then He, through the Holy Spirit, will begin to reveal things to us. So He's telling them, hey, up until this point, I've said many things in figures of speech, like things that are hard to understand. But now He's going to just say it real plain. So they can understand. Okay? And he's referring in this passage just back to him saying, I'm leaving and then I'm going to come back again. Because they're confused. Okay? So let's keep reading. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so let's look at, uh, so verse 25, I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, what will, but will tell you plainly about the Father. Verse 26, in that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. And now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. So now he's just, he's saying it very plainly. And let's see, what, how do they respond? Verse 29, his disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. So he's, getting, he's telling them something that's, that's, that's very... Uh, disturbing to them it's they don't understand what he's saying he earlier in chapter 13 he told peter you're going to de deny me you're going to say you don't even know me before the rooster crows three times so peter at this point is like no lord i will die for you mm -hmm. okay and now jesus is telling the disciples very soon you're going to run away from me. And we know it, when we continue to read, it, we'll get to chapter 18 soon. When the Roman soldiers come to capture Jesus, where do the disciples go? <laughs> they run. Oh no, the soldiers are here. Let's get out of here. I mean, if you've ever been in a, a situation where you're maybe uh, in a place that you know you need to get out of pretty quick, yeah. Yeah. then uh, you, you kind of want to run. Now, li my wife is not here to help tell the, the rest of the story, but I'll tell you my version of this story. Okay? So, on our 10-year anniversary, after we were married 10 years, we've been married 15 now, wow. but on our 10-year, we went to this place in the U.S. called Savannah, Georgia. It's a very famous city, Savannah, in the history of the United States because of lots of things that happened. Uh, desert. In, they have the big desert here, Savannah, Georgia. Well, Savannah is right, right uh, on the, the ocean, the sea. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they filmed, uh, they filmed a lot of movies there. They filmed a famous movie called Forrest Gump. If you've ever seen that movie, it's kind of, it's an old movie. Uh, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Have you ever heard that saying? <laughs> it, but anyways, okay. so we, I decided to take her. It's a, it's an old city, not compared to like the Cyprus old, but for the U.S. it's an old city. So I took her there for our 10 year anniversary. And so we were out in the, right by the, uh, the river. There's, it's called the Savannah River. It's a very famous river. They have, all these nice hotels and places to eat and it's really nice you can just walk along and the the river there's boats going down it's very beautiful so it was on a friday night and i said okay let's go out you know and have our a meal to celebrate our anniversary so we go down there and she's like um oh i told her i need to go to the toilet so we'll stop. We'll we'll find the toilet on the way. So we walk down this hill, and there's like thousands of people in this because we got married one day before what's called our Independence Day, the Fourth of July. We got married on July third. So the Fourth of July is a very big holiday in our country, and so if you go to a big city, lots of people come and they celebrate and they shoot off fireworks and stuff so this was bef right before it got dark so i go and i tell her i'm going to go find a toilet so we're walking down this hill and there's like all these people well all of a sudden i'm i'm close to the toilet and liz is right behind me and all these uh these teenagers come around the corner and they start running like like they're like crazy running and screaming and yelling and yeah, right. around the corner reason? and then all of a sudden we see them they all the, they they're fighting like Ooh. punching oh so we're like Stop. okay and then all these police officers are come around the corner <laughs> they're running and they're cha they're chasing them there's like thousands of people in this crowd and i'm like Oh, this is awesome. This is great. We get to see the police arrest all these gang guys. Like uh, like you see in the movies, yeah, yeah. like the gangsters. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is... Cr so I'm watching. And I'm like... <laughs> and my wife is scared, of course. Of course yeah. Jonathan, let's get out of here. I'm like, no, I got to go to the toilet. Let's, let's wait, wait and see what happens. <laughs> So, <laughs> so she's like, no, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get out of here, I'm scared. So she goes running off this one way, like where the teenagers are running and the police, and I run towards the crowd. <laughs> because half the teenagers ran in the crowd and half of them ran up the steps that we just came down. So she's like, let's run this way. I was like, no, let's run towards the crowd because that's where this big fight is happening. I'm like, I want to see it. <laughs> this is a very bad husband. Like, let's go see what, let's go. I want to see what's happening. No, let's get away. So she's running away. She's being smart. And I'm running towards the crowd. Well, then she come eventually. I'm running this way and she's running this way. And of course she's scared. So she runs back to me. And then all of a sudden, out of the crowd, all these teenagers come running oh. at us. Oh. And we're like, <laughs> and they run around in the police office. I mean, there's many, many police. This is like hundreds of kids, like running and, and it's screaming and they're punching each other and they're fighting. And so then we get into this spot where they've all run around us and uh, by this time my wife is mad at me course, she is she is like what is wrong with you let's get out of here and go to safety what something's going to happen we're going to get hurt you know so i was like okay okay we will we will you go we will go and find a restaurant somewhere else and we'll eat so we we leave and we go get in our car and we go eat, you know. You go to the you, you, you I, I did go to the toilet. <laughs> I made it to the toilet. See, but see, 
The reason why I'm sharing that, obviously, the disciples' situation was different. They thought maybe they would get arrested. So they were running away because they didn't want to be caught in the middle of it. Now, the same thing with my wife. She didn't want to be in the middle of any of that. In trouble. Yeah, because she wanted to get away, which is natural. Of course she would do that. She was smart, I was not. <laughs> you want to see the fight? <laughs> the boys, they were not with us. It was just me and her. They were staying. It's good they are not with you, except John. John? Except John, because John was staying with Jesus. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. That's true. You're right. Okay, so let's keep let's keep going in the in the story. I spent a lot of time on my story, my crazy story. See, if Liz was here, uh, she would probably tell you a little bit different why she was so upset with me. She was mad at me, <laughs> and she had the right to be. Yeah, one of, one of the kids ran into her, and, and she almost fell down, so it scared her. And there was like lots of people around, so. Um, yeah, they they. I don't even know what happened. They just they arrested all these kids. They were like what? They were like in a gang, or they were fighting, you know, or something. I don't know. Gangst, you know, like you see on TV. Those gangs are very bad in the in the U.S. Okay, so so Jesus is telling them this is going to happen. You're going to run away. You're going to be scattered, and you're going to leave me alone. But I'm not alone because I have my my father. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, he says the verse we read. I have said these things to you that you may have peace. In the world, we, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay. So the main thing that I want to point out about this is that in the middle of the bad things that are getting ready to happen, Jesus is going to be taken away, nailed to the cross, and they're confused. What's happening? You're our Lord. You're our King. You're supposed to bring this kingdom which will destroy all other kingdoms. They've probably read the book of Daniel where it talks about, you know, if you read Daniel about this, if you look at the statue in Daniel, the prophecy, and it talks about the kingdoms that will come and the kingdom of God will crush the feet, which is like clay, and all other kingdoms will fall. And so we know that ultimately Jesus will bring that kingdom. But they're confused. If you kill the king of the kingdom, then his kingdom no longer exists. Or he, his, his kingdom no longer has any power. If the king is dead, right? So... That's why he told them earlier, I'm going away and you will be very sad. But then joy will come because of the resurrection. So our joy is, is ultimately in the resurrection of Jesus and our peace that he says here is in his resurrection and knowing that he's coming again. If Jesus is not alive, if he's still dead, then <laughs> there's no... Kingdom coming. If if you kill God, which we you can't unless He allows it. Jesus is called God the Son. Ultimately, it was His plan, but they don't understand that at the time. It was His plan that He has to die to take our sins away, to make a way for us to be forgiven, and then He will rise from the dead. And then he only lived on the earth for 40 more days. And he says, I'm going to go. And I'm going to send you my spirit. And he will be with you. And he will not leave you as orphans, as we looked at in chapter 14. And he says, and I'm coming back again. So our hope and our peace is that Jesus is coming again. He says, in this world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So... Our peace right now, where we're living in this world, in our present trials and tribulations and sufferings, is the hope of knowing that Jesus is coming again. Right? We can have peace 
knowing that no matter what we're going through now, it will end one day. It will. Sometimes you feel, you may feel like, I feel like my life, the way it is now, it's just going to always be this way. Not forever. It will end one day. Jesus is coming. He may come in my lifetime, in your lifetime. He may not. He said, I'm coming soon. He said, be ready. And as I was mentioning before, he said, I will come like a thief in the night. And he says, a thief, when he comes to rob you, does not tell you ahead of time he's coming, right? Hey, at midnight tonight, I'm coming to rob you. Get ready. No, it just, it happens. <laughs> right? I, I was robbed two times in the U.S. Very bad. Me too. Our, not me, like our whole family. Your whole family. Yeah. Me, yeah. My, my sister and my mother. We, my father, he's... Um, yeah, did the robber call you up and say, Ambika, I'll be there in no, three hours? We were not that <laughs> Same with me. I mean, I woke up one morning, I walked outside, and I, and, I, and I had to blink like this because I was like, I owned a business where I had a big truck and then I had this thing called a trailer with all my, I owned a gardening business, landscaping. I had all this stuff. I think I shared this with you before. And I walk out there and I look at my truck and I'm like, where is everything else? <laughs> it's gone. I mean, the whole trailer... The lawnmower had a seven thousand dollar lawnmower on there. You never what? heard the noise? No, I was asleep in bed. Just <laughs> I woke up early, early because I was going to go. Yeah, I, but you never hit, even lit a little. I did not hear anything. At night, how maybe? It was like they, whoever did it, they were very good and quiet. <laughs> but you can ask my you you can ask my sons. I can sleep through anything. They were probably loud and noisy, but I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. You know. So he came and just. They came and just took everything. The police never found Very them, clever, could, huh? couldn't find. I want to encourage you, as I was reading through, and of course I'm praying each week as I'm studying and saying, Lord, what are you saying? But I feel like God is showing me that Jesus just wants to, to, to let us know that He brings peace. And our peace comes from knowing that He is alive. He's not dead. God's not dead. Okay, he, he rose. He went away. He died. He went away. He rose from the dead. He came back to life three days later. Then he went away again. And one day he's coming back. And he says, take heart, I've overcome the world. He's overcome the world many times when Jesus uses this word. It means uh, the world that is ruled under the power of Satan. Because Satan is called the prince of the power of this world. God has given him access, and he, Satan has his own kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. And God has allowed him for a short time to rule this kingdom. And Jesus came to set us free from the power of that kingdom. So when he says, I've overcome this world, he's talking about that, that worldly kingdom of, of Satan and Satan's rule. So death, separation from God, shame, all that Satan brings into our lives. Jesus came to bring us out of that kingdom into the kingdom of light. So our hope is in the resurrection of Jesus and in, in knowing he will come back again soon right so he said we always need to be ready every day if there's things in our lives that we need to repent of we need to go to Jesus and say Lord forgive me I, re I turn to you and be ready and look forward to his return every day and share the gospel with people who don't know him because we know this, the first coming of Jesus was to bring salvation, to, to die for us, to rise, to bring eternal life to us who believe. But the second coming is to bring judgment upon the earth and unbelievers. So we know that we as His people will not be judged 
by God. We are saved from judgment. But we need to warn people of the coming judgment of God and, and also tell them of His love, that, that He loves them and that He wants a relationship with them. But when He does come again, He's coming bringing judgment upon the earth. So we need to be ready and we, need to have, we can have peace now in the middle of our troubles, knowing that it's going to end one day. You're not going to be working for Cypriot employers in the kingdom of God. Right? 